Coach Husky is headed to the NFL and has taken over the Green Bay Packers with two main goals. Develop Jordan Love into their franchise quarterback and bring home a Lombardi trophy with him leading the team. We set our expectations at seven wins for year one with this young team and that goal started in week one with a game in Chicago. Jordan Love would get our offense down into Chicago territory on our opening possession and would take off from the pocket and scramble into the end zone for the first touchdown of the day. The Bears would tie it up at seven apiece but Jordan once again would show off his wheels as he would scramble up the right sideline and would take this in for his second touchdown of the day. We would miss the extra point however so we needed a little extra security with our lead and would get it with this touchdown pass to Christian Watson to put us up by 13. Chicago would end up taking their first lead of the day but Jordan would stay calm and composed as he let our offense down the field to take the lead right back from the Bears. And with a field goal here from Anders Carlson to tack on three more points we'd get the week one victory over the Chicago Bears. That success would carry over the next five games for us largely in part due to Jordan Jordan Love's great performance so far this season. Thankfully, it would carry on the rest of the year too as we'd finish 13-4 and, and would be taking on the Seahawks in the first round of the playoffs. With this next upgrade, Jordan Love was up to a 77 overall now and was looking to lead us into a deep playoff push. We were having a quiet first half so far, but Jordan Love would get us down into the red zone with less than a minute to go in the half, and we were able to tie it up headed into halftime against the Seahawks. The story of this game today was having to play catch up with Seattle, but Jordan Love was doing a stellar job of keeping his team in the game as he would lead them down the field in the fourth quarter and would take the lead over Seattle on this read option. He now had less than a minute to go to get his team down the field and into field goal range to try and win it as he would set up Anders Carlson with a 54 yard attempt to win it that would be good and the Packers were headed to the second round of the playoffs where we would be taking on the second seeded Carolina Panthers. I'm not even going to show you guys the full game highlights this week because we got dominated all game long by the Panthers as season one would come to a disappointing end for us. Jordan Love had progressed to a 78 overall though this season and finished 9th in MVP voting as well. The Cowboys would be taking on the Ravens in the Super Bowl in Season 1 and this is how you know Madden does not make a realistic simulation football game at all. If we wanted to make any moves this offseason we had to clear up cap and the only way to do that would be trading the contracts of David Bakhtiari and Aaron Jones. Although it might hurt at first our first trade was sending Aaron Jones to the Vikings for two fourth round picks but more importantly another young star our receiver in Jordan Addison to add to our receiver core to help Jordan Love. Then we would send Bakhtiari to New England for a second, sixth, and seventh round pick and would also get a 28 year old Jabril Peppers who would fill one of our needed gaps in the safety position this offseason since we weren't going to be bringing back Darnell Savage in free agency. Now that we had 29 million available in cap space, our first move in free agency would be going after Delvin Cook to be our every down back for us for a much cheaper price than Aaron Jones was. And then the tackle spot needed needed to be replaced as well so we would go after Isaiah Wynn as we would land both of these targets in free agency this year. Now it was time for our first draft and the final mock draft had us taking a tackle in the first round and they were not wrong but it was a different tackle still on the board that would catch my eye as it looked like we may have struck gold with our first round pick in right tackle Shamir Givens from Arkansas as he had a hidden development trait. Other than Shamir it was a pretty dull draft class for us and he might be the only day one starter from this class next season as we would start prepping our team for year two led by a now 76 overall quarterback in Jordan Love. We were in Jacksonville to kick off season two and we would open up the game with the first three points of the day but that seemed to be all we could do so far in the first half. Part of that was Jordan Love missing most of the first half due to injury but backup Sean Clifford would step up for us. Even with Love in the second half our offense had stalled out and our defense couldn't seem to get any stops. Jordan Love would do his thing however and would get us an opportunity to tie the this game up late in the fourth quarter but we would fail on the two-point conversion and would not be able to recover the onside kick as we would drop game one of season two to start the year. Seven weeks into the season and things were off to the worst start possible. You would think it would be because of bad quarterback play but Love was surprisingly off to a hot start this year despite the team's record. In turn we would end up signing him to a five-year extension solidifying him as our quarterback of the future and we would also re-sign Kenny Clark, Rasul Douglas, and Jabril Peppers who we acquired from New England last offseason. We needed to get a win to turn this season around now and what would be an easier place for the Packers to win in other than their second home in Soldier Field against the Bears. Jordan Love was making all the right reads today through the air and even though somehow the Bears were putting up a fight in this game they just couldn't stop Jordan Love and our offense from staying in this game all day long. Down by three now with two minutes to go in the game Jordan Love had a chance to lead a game winning drive today against his team's rivals but it wouldn't take that long as he'd step up in the pocket slip through a tackle and take the 
this into the end zone for a touchdown. The Packers just needed a stop, and no surprise, Justin Fields wasn't even close in delivering a good drive for the Bears offense, as the Packers would get a much needed win here in Chicago today. Jordan Love would get another upgrade after that game and would now be up to a 77 overall. And we had finally unlocked our first round pick, Shamir Givens' dev trait, which was superstar ability. We would end up simming to the end of season two and would finish the year a disappointing seven and 10, but somehow Jordan Love looked even better on paper than he did last season. The Cowboys would end up in the Super Bowl for the second straight year. And once again, somehow they'd win the Super Bowl in blowout fashion. Before heading into free agency, we would accept Quay Walker's fifth year player option. And we would try to sign back Josh Myers, but he decided to test free agency instead. The only player we would go after in free agency would be right guard Wyatt Teller, as he would end up accepting a two year, $16.8 million deal from us. After losing Josh Meyer though, we needed to find a center and we were looking to trade for Ricky Stromberg as we would send the commanders our second and fifth round pick of next year's draft and this year's fifth round pick for the young superstar center. Speaking of the draft, it was time for that and we were looking to upgrade our defensive line with our first couple of picks. And our first round pick would be John Venable who would be a hidden dev trait left end. With one of our two picks in the second round, we would go with CJ Ham at a right end and now we had two hidden dev players on either side of our defensive line. Both of these guys would end up being a 73 overall headed into the season. And speaking of overalls, our starting quarterback was now up to an 83 overall. Our offense was starting to come together and was looking very solid headed into this season, but our defense looked even better as we only had two starters on the entire defense who were normal dev players. We would get our first look at this team in week one against the Bears, and Jordan Love and the offense were off to a hot start in the first half, but Jordan would end up going out with a fractured toe in the second quarter, so rookie backup quarterback Bo Metzler would step in for us now. And I know we need to change his number, but maybe that's why he balled out the rest of the game for us tonight, as he would lead us to a week one victory against the Bears. Hopefully his play could continue like that, as Love would be out the next five weeks, but I wasn't too surprised to see us with a 2-4 and four record without him. Jordan was finally back for us in week seven though against the Chargers, and hopefully he could get us back in the win column and turn our season around. It was looking like that would happen here at home today as Love would have multiple touchdown passes this game and would throw one more to Jane Reed to cap this one off as we would get a win in his first game back. With our team being healthy now, we would sim to the playoffs in year three, but would unfortunately miss out on them a second straight year with an 8-9 record. Despite missing five games, Jordan Love would finish the year with an impressive stat line and even more impressive touchdown to interception ratio of 22 to 3. For the first time this rebuild, the Cowboys weren't in the Super Bowl as Josh Allen would finally get himself the Lombardi trophy. In player re-signing, we would accept Jordan Addison's fifth year option and would try to re-sign Eric Stokes, but he would test free agency instead. We would also accept Lucas Van Ness's fifth year option and would re-sign Christian Watson as well. We would try to go and get Eric Stokes back in free agency, but he would end up signing with the Colts. And with not much cap space, we only had room to go after Delvin Tomlinson to help beef up our defensive line, as he would accept our one year $3.4 million offer. After losing Eric Stokes, we needed a replacement at the cornerback position in the draft and our first round pick would be hidden dev trait cornerback Melvin Greenfield from Ohio State who would end up being a 76 overall and would be starting at the second cornerback position for us next season. Before season four, we would officially commit to making the playoffs this year and would look to upgrade our halfback position as Delvin Cook was taking up more cap space than I would like. So we sent a third, a fourth, and a seventh round pick to Cleveland for star dev halfback Sean Dorsey who was eight years younger, eight million dollars cheaper, and the same overall as Delvin Cook but we unfortunately couldn't even and get a single offer after that trade to dump off Delvin's contract. So we would carry both halfbacks on our depth chart headed into season number four, which our team looked amazing on both sides of the ball to start out against the Detroit Lions at home as we would kick off the year with a week one victory. Jordan Love would follow that up with a game winning fourth quarter drive against the Bears at home in week two. And just like that, we were 2-0 to start the season. With our team looking to be in good shape, we would advance to midseason, but I can't lie. I was hoping our record would have looked a little better than four and three at this point. Jordan Love looked to lead us on what would be his second game winning drive of the season this year for us as he would get us into field goal range for the game winning kick in week 8. The following week it was Jordan Love giving us the lead in the fourth quarter yet again to pull out another close win as we were now sitting at 6-3 and three in second place of the division behind the Vikings. Being only a game behind them, this matchup could decide who takes the NFC North at the end of the season. Jordan Love and the offense controlled this game all day from the start of kickoff and would get us the much needed division win. We now had a one game lead over the Vikings with a 10 and 4 record, so we wanted to make sure we secured the division with a win this week against them, and we could not have.
have asked for a stronger showing than what this team put out on the field today with a 45-24 victory. We would finish Season 4 with a final record of 11-6, with Jordan Love having his best career season yet, only 55 yards shy of 4,000 on the season, as he would help lead us to a third seed finish in the NFC. It was time for Jordan Love in the playoffs, and he would get us started by taking the lead with our first touchdown over the Buccaneers here at Lambeau. Now, I do have to say that I did not know about the Madden glitch subbing your receivers out permanently in the postseason, but Jordan Love and the offense were still able to make do with all the backups, as we would get a wild card round victory. We were at home for the divisional round and ran into the same glitched problem again, so Jordan Love would have to do a lot of the work by himself this week, but he was up for the task, as this game would start to turn into a blowout by the fourth quarter, and this team was headed to the NFC Championship. This was the first time our team we had built made it to the NFC Conference Championship, and we were off to a hot start as Jordan Love would connect with Christian Watson for an opening drive touchdown. I had also figured out how to fix the depth chart glitch, so we had our top receivers in the entire game for us now, and having them in the game would help us go up by two possessions over Dallas late in the fourth quarter, as we would win the NFC Championship and would be facing the Bills in our first Super Bowl matchup. We would get off to a quick start tonight setting up Delvin Cook on a halfback screen for the opening touchdown of the game, and we would force a fourth down against Buffalo and almost block this field goal attempt of theirs. They would drill the kick though so Jordan Love would step up and would respond with a rushing touchdown of his own to put us up by 11, but Jermaine Reed would bring this back within one point for the Bills. We needed to extend this lead and would get down the field quickly before halftime to score and would find ourselves back in the end zone to start the second half as Jordan Love would take this himself on a read option for his second rushing touchdown of the night. Anders Carlson would tack on one more field goal to keep it a two possession game and after recovering Buffalo's onside kick attempt late in the fourth quarter, we had finally completed our goal as we had rebuilt the Green Bay Packers and won Jordan Love a Super Bowl.